lost our bodies in the fire. We gave Our name is Carl Michelle. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're here with me. Make sure and share this video or just press the like button because that will let other people know that this is a message you're looking at and watching. And um, I hope that this will be able to encourage somebody that you know. You always want to pay it forward because we reap what we sow. And if you sow into other people's life, other people will sow back into yours. So I want to get started with part two. I hope that if you have not watched part one, go back to this address right here below. I'm going to type it in, put it right there. And go and watch part one. Make sure that if you're watching this and there's part three and part four, make sure and go watch all the pieces. Invest into your life. Okay, here we go. We've been looking at the Bible verse, James 3, 14, and I'm going to read that to you. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil practices. So that's not good. That's not good is to, to um, have all those things in your heart. So in part one, we broke apart the word harbor and bitter and self, selfish ambition. Today we're going to talk about boasting because it says, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Ambition in your heart. So it's selfish ambition in your heart. Let's look at what the Bible says first about the heart. The heart in Greek is called cardia, and I would suspect that's where we get cardio, which means of your heart, right? Do you know that the heart is mentioned 800 times in the Bible, but it never refers to the functioning organ of our body that pumps blood through our body? Did you know that? Isn't that cool? It only refers to our inner life, our inner intention, our character, our mind, our self-will, the center of our being. It is our desire decision maker. What in the world? That is so cool. Our desire decision maker. So that is our heart, okay? So when the Bible says a selfish ambition in your hearts, it's talking about don't have um, bitterness, envy, and selfish ambition in the inner part of your life, in your inner intention, in your character, in your mind, in your self-will. Do not have all those things in the center of who you are and your being. Do not allow those things to be your desired decision makers. Wow! I found that so interesting. So on to the next word is boast about it. So that word means to exalt yourself. It means to intensify by speaking loudly. It means to um, exalt yourself at the expense of someone else. It means to unjustif unjustifiably downgrade someone by boasting about your, your false sense of superiority. Okay. In, a, in short, it means arrogant. Let me give you some examples of that. So exalting yourself would say, you know what? I would never do that to you. I would never, ever, ever think about hurting you in that way. Um, I would never leave these things. If it were you that were in charge of cleaning the house, I wouldn't be so selfish and not pick up all my stuff. And not, I wouldn't like dare not help you. Or if it were me, I would definitely be reading the Bible more. Like, I can't believe you don't read the Bible more. That's I do. I read the Bible all the time and I spend time with God and I go to church because I am... You know, I'm just really desperate to know God, and I know you don't. Um, that's that's kind of boasting and exalting yourself. Um, intensively talking over someone is when somebody's trying to share their heart with you or trying to share their truth with you, and you talk loudly over them and shut them down. Ooh, this was one of my number one struggles in my marriage, was never giving my husband the opportunity to share his heart. And then what was worse than that, when he would have the guts to share his heart or his truth, which was very rare, I would then cut him down and fight back with him. That's one of my biggest struggles because I'm a talker and negotiator. And, and so I have learned recently in the last few years to just be silent and let him speak and let him share. But not only that, to let him trust me with his truth. In other words, I'm not going to turn his truth into selfish ambition. I'm going to allow him to speak his truth 
I'm not going to allow it to, to, to land on me and make me offended because offense is Satan's number one trap. But I'm going to allow him to speak his truth. The other thing is um, downgrading somebody by boasting about my own self superiority. So that would be like what we just talked about. Um, you know, that person doesn't really know what they're talking about, or you don't even know what you're talking about. I do because I study and I do this and I work harder. I make more money. I'm wiser at spending. So I am the authority here, not you. You make too many bad decisions and I cannot trust you with my submission because you are not worthy of my respect. You see, all of that is boasting. And the Bible says, do not boast about it or deny the truth. So don't say, well, that's not me. I don't do that. When really you kind of do, maybe. Maybe you're not that way. I know I was. Whew, I was that was literally one of my worst, um, my worst downfalls. Um, if you get mad easy and call yourself passionate and nurture your anger and your unforgiveness, that is what we're talking about in essence. That's the whole throw together. And I know that I used to be that way. Oh, I would get so angry so quick because I just felt like I was a bomb about to explode. So anything that somebody would say against me, I would take that offensively because in my mind, I had a higher superiority because I felt like I knew more. That's another big fat lie from the pit of hell. I did not know more. I just had so much sin in my life and, and it's a sin that we don't talk about very often. You know, we talk about the sin of pornography and adultery and murder and um, lust and, and, and addiction, but we never talk about the sin of selfishness, of pride, of envy, of jealousy. Those are all very big deals in the Bible. And so that's kind of the thing. I know that whenever I was walking around in the darkness and I finally allowed myself to sit down and embrace the goodness of God in an effort to create a wholeness with Him, that's whenever I decided that I would begin to find the light of the truth. And when I found that light, all of that darkness that I felt inside of me, even, even though I was surrounded by people, I always felt alone because I was so intimidating or I was so superior in my mind or so misknow it all. So, you know, even through that darkness, I was able to shed that light into my own heart through the power of Jesus. And I, that's what I'm trying to share with you. I'm just trying to open up to your mind and your heart the truth so that the truth will set you free. So I guess the question is, how do we get past that? How do we begin to live an other-centered life? Whenever you are focused, you know, one of, my, one of the things that I understand now as I've been studying these two words is that there's a lot, a lot of things that will begin to dissipate in your life. A lot of strife, a lot of anger, a lot of relationship issues, a lot of addictions a lot of depression that begins to subside whenever you begin to live an other-centered life. That does not mean that you begin to live as a slave. That does not mean that you begin to, um, to be abused more or taken advantage of more. That, begins, that means that you get to begin to focus on the needs of other people around your life. And speaking of that, if you are engaged or married to or dating a man or a woman who is extremely abusive, um, whether it be verbally, emotionally, physically, whether they are repeat offender, adulterers. Um, these are things that I want you to strongly consider going and finding a good Christian counselor to get involved with. Um, if you're being physically abused, I want to encourage you to, dis to remove yourself from that situation and get some help. This is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, learning to love someone so much that they have boundaries around you that they may not cross. And so that protects your heart, it protects your mind, and it gives you the power to serve them without anything expected in return. And that is the very number one secret in my marriage that took me from a marriage that was destructive and that was not happy into the heavenly marriage that I'm in right now. And, and that was when I made a decision that I was going to share the heart of Christ inside of my marriage first. And I was going to make it my business to, to be an other-centered, focused heart. And so, in, and let me give you a, a few steps that you can start with. The first one is find five things that you love about your spouse or your girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever you're in a relationship with. Find five things that you love about them. 
find five ways that they love to be treated and ask them what are some things that that you love that you love that is done for you and write those down and then begin to sow into the life of that person also do the same for your children the number one thing to do is never expect anything in return if you can begin to live a life without any expectation but glorifying and receiving everything with thankfulness and gratitude you will begin to see your life turning around. So write down those list of five things and begin today to implement those things into that life. And I promise you, the word says that what you sow, you will reap. And so that goes the same thing for your time in your marriage. What you sow into your marriage, you will reap back tenfold. So if you begin to sow words of encouragement, words of life, you begin to speak into the people that you love, you begin to just forgive them in your heart, begin to serve them, begin to do nice little things for them all the time. Expect nothing in return, be released from that expectation. I promise you that you will begin to feel a freedom and an enormous amount of love that only God can bring you. Don't forget, go plug in to part three and four and watch one if you haven't already watched it because I'm going to bring you some powerful declarations that will help you to launch yourself into the next level of your relationship. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, share or like this video. Take care and we'll see you next time.